Welcome to this uh, tutorial and in this tutorial I want to share a few thoughts about a very important document in ERP Next and that's the Item Master. <coughs> Pardon the frog in the throat there. Uh, if you use, whenever you use ERP Next, uh, whether it's buying something or selling something or manufacturing something or rendering a service etc etc you invariably use an item. You sell an item, you buy an item, the item uh, or the service that you render is an item, and so we can carry on. So it's rather important to look at a few things around the item master. So let's just get my test system up here. These are all just dummy items, nothing related to anything. Um, a list of them, an important thing to note here is something called the item group. So each item uh, can be grouped according to a certain uh, grouping name. For instance, all the uh, raw materials used in manufacturing can be in an item group called raw material. Keep in mind, of course, that you can also use sub-assemblies in manufacturing. So the fact that I say all the items used in manufacturing doesn't mean that they have to be in raw materials. Um, and then, of course, the product that you produce uh, will be under the products item group. Um, and certainly, as I've already mentioned, there's sub-assemblies. <coughs> and then there's also an item group called services. All right, if you're in the services industry, you'll have a few services item groups. Um, and you can certainly define define your own. There's some predefined uh, item groups, but you can add your own. Then, of course, also uh, important is the ID. So you've got an item name and an item ID. Uh, now, this is what, what I like using. Uh, for instance, raw material starts with SKU. And then if you've got 10,000, 20,000, 30, 40, 50,000, etc., etc. And 10,000 can be a certain group of items. So 10,001 is something, 10,002 is something, 10,003. You can even make this um, more granular. Um, you can, must be nothing preventing you from saying SKU 100,000. It just gives, moves the scope um, wider or narrower in terms of what you can allocate to each little category. Uh, all right, so uh, the other way to, another type of ID can be SER, for instance, for services. All right, and so you can carry on. Um, personally, I think this is quite handy and very useful, so it's worthwhile spending a bit of time just thinking about your ID system that you want to implement. And of course, nothing prevents you from using an ID that's already at attached to the item. If this is purchased from a supplier, nothing preventing you from using the supplier's ID, of course. All right, so let's have a look at this item. Now, in this video, I just want to share things about the really um, minimum things that you need to set up. I'll mention a few other things, but you know, it, it really is so much that it's it's if, if I put everything in one video, it's going to be a very long video. So let's rather break it up. So the bare minimum, we've already spoken about the item name, name and item ID. Well, the item name is, of course, the name of the item. All right, we've mentioned the item group. Uh, very important here is the unit of measure. All right, so in the case of a nut or a bolt, it's each. Um, in the case of printing filament, you know, it's grams and rolls. In nuts and bolts, it's eaches and boxes and packets. Uh, but now, you need to be very careful what you define here as the default unit of measure. Keep in mind that you've got a, a purchasing unit of measure and a sales unit of measure, and you've got <coughs> a barcode unit of measure, uh, and also your unit of measure table. So all of these uh, interact with each other to assist whatever your system is. 
So it's a rather important choice, this. Uh, now let's rather look at that perhaps in a se separate video. Otherwise, as I said, this video is going to be way too long. But don't just put something in here. Uh, think about that carefully. Okay, now the very important ticks, tick boxes, um, are these ones. Maintain stock, include item and manufacturing. Is it a fixed asset? All right, so obviously this is an item that I want to maintain stock and I want to include it in manufacturing. So this could be a, a nut or a bolt or something like that. Um, if you've got a printer, it's a fixed asset, you're not going to maintain stock of it and you're not going to use it in, in manufacturing. Uh, now, fixed assets can be used in manufacturing, but that's the equipment. It's not consumed as part of the manufacturing process. All right. So then you'll have fixed asset ticks, and this is unticked, and that's unticked. All right. So it'll look something like this. Okay, it's not going to allow me to tick that now, because it's already a defined item. Um, that's how it was. All right, so if you want to maintain stock, but it's not an item used in manufacturing, you know, this could be printing paper. Uh, or, you know, your consumables like sugar and milk or something like this uh, that you want to maintain stock of. If you don't want to maintain stock of that, you don't tick that. But if you want to say, okay, well, you know, this is the consumables that my staff use and keep track of that, then you'll tick that, but you'll untick that and you'll untick that. Okay. Uh, and, of course, if it's some operation or service uh, for instance, you build roofs and there's some item that's an actual um, more a service type of thing um, during the process, you won't tick that because it's not a stock item, but you want, you want to include that in manufacturing. Okay, so you have to look at all your items and say, you know, am I maintaining stock? Is it used in manufacturing? And is it a fixed asset? Okay, just be aware that um, although you don't carry stock of a particular item, if it's going to land up in a warehouse somewhere during the production process, you, know, you would want to tick that. Um, otherwise, it's going to generate an error somewhere. I have seen that. Okay, so another very important... I'm first just going to go through the bare minimum, uh, which I think is important. Uh, where is that? I think it's here. Uh, no. No. It's done the accounting. Yeah, there we go. Uh, just pay attention that version 14 has got the tabs. Yeah, version 13, all of this information is on one on one page. So, you know, one just needs to get used to uh, the shift from having everything on one page and selecting the particular tab on the top there. Okay. All right, so under accounting, you've got the company that's related to this item and of course if you click there you can set the default warehouse and of course your default costing centers all right you've got a default supply if you've got a default supply <coughs> and then you've also got some default um, account settings yeah for instance if you if it's a service and you want to link this to an, a default expense account you can select that there all right so there's a few default settings there as well Another important one is if this item, for instance, is used in a subcontracting process. In other words, let's say this item is a wooden box and you supply the wood to a subcontractor and buy the finished box as an item back. So this item is then the box. And you tick here, supply raw material, because to obtain this item, which is the wooden box, I need to supply the raw materials all right so and then when you do the purchase order for this box item then ERP next will automatically handle the process correctly whereby if you issue the purchase order there's also a stock entry to move the stock from your warehouse to the supplier's warehouse okay so then it handles that process correctly so this is actually quite an important tick um, some other things that um, we can share some thoughts on perhaps in another video 
is, you know, whether it's an alternative item that really is, you know, is this an alternative item to another item used during manufacturing? So you've got alternative items. If the one's not available, you can use the other one. And of course, variants. You know, what is a variant? A variant is if you manufacture shirts, but you've got red, blue, and and um, green shirts. So the, the red, green, and blue are variants. Um, all right, on the dashboard, that's where your links are. Uh, inventory, there's all your inventory settings. Here's your barcode settings. Once again, the unit of measure, we'll look at that a little bit later. Here's your order, reordering table. Units of measure I've already mentioned. This is if you've got serial numbers and batch numbers. Right, for instance, in a product, you might have a serial number. Okay, I mentioned that. Purchase, under purchase and sales settings, you also have units of measure. All right, so watch out for that. We can have a look at that in, a little, in another video. Um, there you've got your supplier details, your supplier number, um, your deferred accounting. There's also deferred accounting. Um, and then, of course, if you've got any tax related to that particular item, um, depending on your country and your system, there might be taxes uh, applicable to only this particular item. Then, of course, if, you, uh, if you've got a use ERP Nexus quality system, you might have a quality inspection template, like this is a goods receive inspection, so inspection required before um, it actually gets put into your warehouse, and of course in, in that inspection template you specify what needs to be checked, and we can look at that on in a different video as well. And of course we've already spoken about that. Right, uh, that's about a few thoughts that I want to share. Uh, hope you found that useful.